In this video, I will cover how to schedule and monitor data pipelines in Microsoft Fabric. Also, I will show to you how you can create a workaround to one very significant limitation with data pipeline parameters. Stay tuned. Welcome to the video. My name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Microsoft Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video, we are continuing our journey with Microsoft Fabric data engineering. And in this video, we are going to cover how to schedule and monitor data pipelines. But now, without further ado, let's fire up Fabric and check out how scheduling and monitoring works there. Now we have the Microsoft Fabric open here. Let's open up the data factory experience and create a new data pipeline. And we will have to name that pipeline according to our naming conventions. Then we want to start with the blank canvas after this loads up. And to this pipeline, we can just add one weight activity since the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how the scheduling works and not to build actual pipeline here. In the previous videos, we have run our pipelines by just clicking this run button here that would trigger a manual pipeline run for this pipeline here. But today we're going to cover the schedule feature here in pipelines. And next to that run button, we have this schedule button here. And by clicking this, it will open up this configuration for our pipeline schedule. Currently, we haven't defined any schedules for this pipeline since we just created this one. But here we could turn this schedule run on and by clicking that on this will open up these other settings here that we have first we could select when we want to repeat our schedule by default this is by the minute and here we would configure uh, every minute we would want this pipeline to run for example every 15 minutes or every one minute and then we would have to configure the start date and time for this pipeline. Usually you want to have this in the past. It's pretty safe to input there the current timestamp that you have currently. And I will do that. Then we would have to configure the end date and time for this pipeline. This is actually a mandatory setting that is a bit strange in my opinion. Since in some cases you want your pipeline to run basically forever or until you manually turn that off. But here I would recommend just setting some time that is very far in the future if you don't have any cases that you would need your pipeline to stop running at a certain date. Now let's configure tomorrow there just for demo purposes okay then you could pick a time zone when you want your pipeline to run i'm in helsinki so i pick the helsinki time here now basically we would be able to apply this schedule but let's not do that just yet we could check these other features that we have under this repeat here we could for example repeat this hourly then we would select every hour we want this to run maybe every one hours then we have the daily schedule here we would schedule the time we want this pipeline to run daily for example maybe we want this to run 8 a.m each morning and the cool thing here is that we can specify multiple times that we want this pipeline to run each day. So it's not limited just to one time. Then lastly, we have this weekly scheduling here that we can select the weekdays we want this pipeline to run and then the times we want it to run. Basically, this extends the daily scheduling a bit. So we could, for example, skip the pipeline run during the weekends if it's not necessary or so. But for now, let's go back and change this to by the minute and select every one minute and let's click apply so we can see how our pipeline will run. And now we have applied this schedule to our pipeline. And good thing to note here that we can only have one schedule defined to one pipeline. So basically, if you're coming from Azure Data Factory world, there you could have multiple triggers tied to one pipeline. But here it's just one schedule per pipeline. Now let's allow this pipeline to run for a moment and let's close this schedule window here. And let's create another data pipeline here because I want to demonstrate to you one other point about this scheduling. To this pipeline also let's add weight activity and let's add a few parameters here. Let's add for example param1 and param2. 
and let's have them as string values. Now I want to talk about one key issue with these parameters. If you're coming from Azure Data Factory or Synapse Analytics world, you know that if you tie a trigger to a pipeline, you are able to define the parameter values for that trigger. But with scheduling, you don't have that option here in Microsoft Fabric. And basically only the default values for these parameters would be used when scheduling the pipeline. Now you could be wondering how you can get the trigger time of the pipeline, for example, and use that as part of your pipeline logic. In the data factory and Synapse Analytics, you would usually use trigger properties to derive those values and pass them as parameters to the pipeline. But here things work a bit differently. This is also doable here, but you have to use a workaround. But before I tell you about that workaround, I would like you to know that I spent a ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Marxed Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's go to that workaround. For example, to get that trigger timestamp, we can actually use some predefined system variables. Let's add set variable activity here and let's go and define a new variable to this pipeline and call that var1. And then we can set value for this var1 and open the dynamic content. And here we have some system variables here. And one of these is the pipeline trigger time. And by using this system variable, you would be able to get the time when the pipeline was triggered in UTC format. And then you would be able to use that value as part of your pipeline logic. So things work a bit differently here com compared to Azure Data Factory and Synapse Analytics. But this similar information is available here as well. Next, uh, let's go to the Monitor Hub and check out how our pipeline has been running that we just scheduled. Monitoring Hub can be found here in the left bar. And here we can see the pipeline runs that have been running here. And we can see that our pipeline has been already running quite a many times since I scheduled it to run every one minute. And here we can check out what is happening in this pipeline or what happened during the run. Here we have this view where we can see how did the activities execute. And here we would see all the activities and what were their statuses and did they have any errors if we would have more activities here. But since we only have the wait activity here, we cannot see that much here this time. We also have this Gantt view here that is not very well demonstrated here since we only have one activity. But basically this would show this kind of a visual illustration when did those activities run compared to each other. If you have a pipeline with multiple branches and multiple activities executing in those branches. But now let's go back to the monitor hub. Here we could monitor our pipeline runs and we have some filters to filter out, for example, if we want to only see the succeed pipeline runs or maybe the failed pipeline runs if we are investigating failures here. Also, we are able to modify these columns that we have here and add some more columns to this so that we can get more information to this view, what has been happening with our pipelines. Also, one cool thing to note about this monitoring hub that in the Azure Data Factory, for example, you can only see the pipeline runs that are happening in the data factory that you are looking at. But in this Fabric Data Factory and this monitoring, you can see basically all the pipeline runs in every work space that you have access to with your account that you have logged in. So basically we would able to see all the pipeline runs in different environments if we think about it that way. But yeah, I hope you now have an understanding how scheduling and monitoring data pipelines works in Microsoft Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.